yeah. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Sunday. I'm just on a leisurely drive out to the house. I'm going from my folks' house back to my place for a little bit just to do a little housekeeping, get some parts for the Mazda that I know we need to replace to completely finish that. Like I said, it's drivable. I got insurance put back on it. I got tabs on it. We're just tying up a few loose ends. I need a caliper bolt. One of them broke. And so right now that caliper is just hanging there. I got Sammy with me. Hey girl. And yeah, so I was just thinking about something that I wanted to kind of discuss. We used to do a lot of these driving discussion videos and I haven't done one in a while. So I wanted to kind of put one back out there again. And what I wanted to talk about today was working on the flat rate system as a technician. And I'm gonna be the first one out there to say that when you are lacking experience and lacking knowledge, the flat rate system definitely works against you. And I know that by no stretch of the imagination am I the world's greatest technician. I have a lot of holes in my diagnostic work. I have a lot of things that I need to personally improve on and I make mistakes. And you're gonna have that when you're starting out in any career. You know, I'm, I'm 24 years old, so I haven't been doing this that long. This is my, this is going into my fourth year in the main shop. So it's, it's a learning curve just like anything, but it seems like for me personally at least it goes in spurts. I have spurts of times that go really well and spurts of times that don't go so well. And I think it's all about keeping your head up and keeping a consistent attitude when you're in those hard times, right? And it's easier said than done, but the flat rate system can get very stressful. Many of you guys know I have a house. I bought a house almost two years ago and it's been like the best thing in the world, but it also adds a lot of stress. That on top of my student loans and everything else I'm trying to do, it money's tight. I mean, money's really tight and you know, I'm doing it by myself. I don't have any roommates anymore. And the flat rate system seems to screw the technician a lot. I mean, and I think it can be great. Once you get your experience, if you're a hard worker and you get that experience level, it can be a really good thing. It can be a very motivating thing. Even me, it's very motivating. You know, normally I'm sitting around that 90% to 111, I think is the highest I've gotten, 111, 112%. You know, so I don't feel like I'm doing terrible. It's not that at all. It's just, it can be very stressful. These last couple months, um, I had that van that, was, you know, it ended up being a head gasket, which I really didn't believe that it was. The block ended up being warped, the heads ended up being warped, and it just turned into a giant mess. And that was my fault, I'll fully admit that. I mean, I checked my compression, I looked inside the cylinders of the boroscope, the one spark plug looked a little screwy, but since I didn't personally see any cooling going into that combustion chamber, I didn't really think anything of it, so I chased my tail for a while. That piece of shit is still sitting in my stall. And yeah, it, it sucks, I mean, it really sucks. But it's stuff that happens. One of my coworkers ended up helping me out and that guy's smarter than I am. He's been doing it longer and he helped me out and and now we're just dealing with a bunch of political BS, which is kind of a trade-off, I would say. At the dealership, you deal with a lot of politics, dealership politics, whatever, but you're working on newer cars. In an independent shop, a lot of times, you're working on every rusty piece of junk that's on the road. So it's kind of a give and take scenario. You know, work, there's always gonna be, there's always gonna be pros and cons. Oh yes, pros and cons. Anyway, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about the ways that I think flat rate really doesn't benefit us. Now, if you have a guarantee, if you are fortunate enough to work in a shop where there's a base guarantee, that takes a little bit of the stress off you. You know, it's not, maybe not enough to do the things you would want to do, but at least you know you're going to get something. I'll give you a prime example. I've just, like I said, that van hit me really hard. Then I got some stuff that I ended up having to do under warranty because at the end of the day, the customer is always right. And as the technician, you don't have that management pull. You don't have that last, you don't have that last say. So a lot of times you end up just tucking your head down and getting it done because it's just easier than to fight something. Um, for me, that's really hard because it's like the principle of the thing. If I don't think something's right, it could be, it could be in the end hurting me, but it's hard for me to go against what I feel was the right thing to do. Perfect example though, front cover job on a car, I'm not gonna go into specifics, but this particular car, the ABS module is on top of the motor mount and it is absolute hell to do this front cover. And I ended up doing it for someone else that did it wrong. And it was just a mess. I got in there and there were a ton of mistakes. I make mistakes. I mean, I'm not saying that I don't, but this thing was just kind of hacked together. There was stuff missing and it was a good customer of mine, so I fixed it, and I got paid parts warranty time because that other person had done it before. My personal opinion, if someone screws something up and you're fixing it, you should get paid at least 
what that job pays for you to be able to do it, not warranty time. That's bullshit because you didn't have anything to do with it and you're just trying to make it right. You know, the customer shouldn't have to pay again, absolutely not. But if I'm doing a job and I'm also fixing things that were wrong with that job, why should I suffer? That particular job took me two days, two full days to get it done. Hacked the shit out of my fingers. It was just brutal. And so 16 hours I spent finishing this from start to finish, fixing little things along the way. And the warranty pay is 3.5 hours. You can't live on that. And warranty pay, it it really frustrates me just in general because again, I understand that the customer shouldn't have to pay for that. If you have a new car and something goes wrong, I understand where the warranty comes in. That's Toyota taking care of their customers. But I don't think that the companies then are taking care of their employees because look at it this way. If you have a common problem on a car that ultimately boils down to an engineering flaw, why the hell is the technician suffering? Why are we suffering and getting paid less because something was designed improperly? To me, that is a load of bullshit. So, and then the common misconception that you're always told, well, the harder you work, the harder you work, you can make as much money as you want. It's true to an extent, but like for me, I bust my ass. I know I bust my ass. I work hard. Am I the best? No. Do I struggle? Yes. But if you work your ass off, why should you always lose? And I'm not saying I always lose. There's, I've had really good pay periods. I've had really bad pay periods. And that's part of the game. But when it turns out to be that you're constantly getting warranty work or getting shafted like on that job that I told you about, it kind of is really discouraging. And that's where you got to be tough. That's where you got to have a thick skin. That's where you got to have a thick skin and be able just to duck your head down and keep going, you guys. And I'm not in a point in my career where I feel like I'm done. I'm not at a point where I know all the stuff I want to know. I still crave that knowledge. I still want to learn more about this industry and continue to get better. I have a bag of electrical books in the back of my car that I bought from a buddy that I sit and study. And I read and I read because that's the one thing that if I had to tell you, if I had to tell you something that I struggle with the most, it's electrical work. It's because you can't see it. It's not something you can see. It's something you just have to understand. But I continue to force myself to sit down and try to get better at it because let's be honest guys if you fight it you're screwed this industry isn't going any other direction the electronics and computer controlled systems and all that crap is just going to keep getting worse you want to make money in this field you better get good at that the other thing that bugs me about flat rate is it encourages you to be a parts replacer yes you can diagnose stuff but if you fully want to understand something no no when you get to the point where you know that this is what failed and that is the bad part, you put it in because you can't afford to sit there and understand exactly what happened. You wanna do that, do it in your own time. Read at home, do whatever. Problem is, a lot of times you get home after a long day and you don't wanna do that. Like I said, and I'm not saying it's the hardest job in the world because there's a lot of people that endure a lot more grief at their job than we do, but it's a physically demanding job. I showed you my hand. On Friday, I like popped one of my ribs out and you ever crack your sternum, kinda of, you feel like the muscles separate. It hurts to breathe right now, like I am sore as shit. And that's just part of the game. I mean, if you don't want it, get the hell out. But that is something that really bugs me because I'm someone that wants to understand why. Like, oh, yep, this is the part, put it in. Yeah, but why? But if you wanna make a living, you can't afford to do that. You have to do that on your own time. When you're working, you're not learning. That's not the time to learn. And you will indirectly learn a lot. I mean, I have learned more in my couple years in the back shop than I ever did in tech school. Not to say that my teachers weren't awesome. I loved my tech school teachers, but you'll learn more as you go. But if you really want to understand and comprehend, that's something that you have to invest in your own career because the flat rate system just does not provide enough time for you to do that while you're at work. And I think that's one of my frustrations. I want to know exactly why. And sometimes I dig a little bit too deep trying to figure that out and it ends up hurting you in the end. So I just wanted to make this little video just to discuss something again, you guys. I feel like we haven't done a video like this in quite a while. So I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. I thank you for your continued support. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I got a really good tool to give away for you guys this time. 500 subscribers, we're giving that tool away to one of you. So subscribe and hit the bell button so you're notified every time that we upload a video. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Scribble gems to get my pockets lined till I get arthritis. Which my heart is icy.